On October 11, 1897, a year after Ethiopia defended itself from Italian colonization at the Battle of Hadwa, Emperor Menelik II authorized the creation of a flag containing a rectangular tricolor from top to bottom, red, yellow, and green. This flag will eventually have the first letter of its name placed on the center stripe and it will become a clear reference to the Ethiopian Abyssinian Empire as the only African state that resisted modern European colonialism, having defeated the Kingdom of Italy in 1896. This Ethiopian flag will be changed several times over the years as the country itself evolved from a monarchy to a dictatorship and then to a parliamentary democracy. But these three colors will remain. In March 1957, Ghana became the first country in Sub-Saharan Africa to gain independence and Kwame Nkrumah became the country's first Prime Minister and eventually President. Nkrumah emerged as a major advocate for the unity of independent Africa and he embodied a political activist approach to Pan-Africanism, championing the quest of regional integration of the whole of the African continent. You see. The concept of Pan-Africanism is a worldwide movement that aims at encouraging and strengthening the bonds of solidarity between all indigenous and diaspora ethnic groups of Africa. Nkrumah was strongly inspired by Ethiopian's resistance against the foreign occupation and decided to incorporate the country's tricolor scheme into the Ghana flag as a way of paying homage to Ethiopia for being the only African country, aside from Liberia, that was never colonized. They took Ethiopia's flag, which by this time had a green stripe on the top instead of red, flipped it and placed a black five-point star in the middle of the flag. Soon, other independent African countries would follow suit. Guinea, upon gaining independence in 1958, took the same idea as Ghana, but this time they went for a vertical tricolor scheme. Mali's flag is Guinea's flag, but with green at the beginning and red at the last stripe. The flag of Cameroon, similar to that of Mali, has red at the middle band with a yellow star and a yellow stripe at the end of the flag. The only difference between the flag of Senegal and the flag of Mali is the green star in the middle strip. Other African countries that had these colors in their flags include Togo, Comoros, Burkina Faso, Seychelles, Guinea-Bissau, Sao Tome and Principe, Congo, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Mauritania, Benin, and so many others. These three colors, red, green, and yellow, with the inclusion of black, will later be known as the Pan-African Colors. Although the meaning of the individual colors using a country's flag may differ from country to country, the countries of the flag that make use of the Pan-African Colors have similar meaning, with green representing the unique nature of the continent, having good land for agriculture, red representing the blood and the common heritage of Africans, during the fight against the oppression from colonialism, yellow representing the wealth of Africa, and finally, black, which signifies the color of the people. However, there is another variation of the Pan-African color scheme, developed by Marcos Musaya Gave, the Jamaican-born founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, that makes use of just red, green, and black colors. Countries like Malawi, Kenya, and the former country of Biafra were inspired by this color combination. The colors of this flag do, however, share similar meanings with those inspired by Ethiopia. Now, the adoption of these particular colors by these African countries was not because they lacked artistic or design tastes. We must understand that at that time, these countries were just recovering from colonial oppression and a way they could relate with each other was to adopt a similar color scheme as 
these colors may signify a similar heritage. And again, the ideals of Pan-Africanism, which is a call for the United Africa, was a big deal for the continent of Africa at that time. We are indeed grateful to these African countries for choosing to adopt the Pan-African colors in their flag because every time the flag of these countries are raised, they remind us of the great African soil, the wealth in the continent, the color of its people, and above all, the blood of those who gave everything for the land they loved. If you've watched this video to the end, I want to say thank you. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this every week. And also hit the bell notification as you do so, so you never miss any of my videos.